My name is Rafael Sanchez, and I was born in Hardin's in Texas, year 1932, January 1st, 1932. I would describe myself um, preferably as an American first. first. Of uh, Mexican descent, uh, simply because I happen to have been born here in, in Texas. Well, my father is from uh, Monterey, Mexico, and my my mother is from Linares, Nuevo León. Well, my father is a native of Mon Monterrey, Mexico. Of Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico, and uh, he came to this country in, I think, about uh, 1910. He wound up in San Antonio working for a, a, a company that produced art stone. The, company, the name of the company was Rodriguez Brothers. Uh, one time they sent him to the Rio Grande Valley, to Harlingen, uh, where uh, W.T. Liston Company uh, needed a job. You know, he was building his, some schools and uh, he needed some art, art stone. They liked this uh, work so well, you know, that Mr. Liston decided that he wanted to open a, a shop for my dad. Uh, so he did. He opened a, sh a shop and uh, and let my my dad run it. In the course of time, you know, my 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 wife, my mother, who used to pass down the street from uh, where his shop was, you know, uh, he it caught his eye, you know, and uh, he uh, he found the opportunity to get with her and. And uh, eventually they married. And uh, W.G. Liston was forced to close down the shop. It's, you know, everybody was was uh, lining up for soup lines. And my, my dad, being uh, the type of person that he was, wouldn't stand in the soup line. But he had, he had a few dollars in his pocket and he went and rented a place where he started practicing a trade that he learned while he was growing up in Monterey. That was uh, furniture re repair and upholstery. I think that's one of the, one one of the things that I'm really really proud of. You know, my dad doing that. You know, not being so ready to go and stand in the soup line with a with a hand, you know, give me, give me, give me. And uh, so, if that's uh, if that's uh, the the upbringing he had as 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 a Mexican, well, I am proud of being Mexican. Eventually, we had they had a family, you know, a pretty good sized family. We had. Uh, Nine children in a in a family. The order of the order of birth was my sister Anita, who was born in 1928. Uh, Irene, who was born in 1930. I was born in 32. Sister was born in 35, and then my brother was 30, 36. That was Louis. No, he was. I forget the date of his birth, but then uh, there was two other children, uh, uh, Gabe and uh, Rosa, Rose. Uh, you, you know that my father was a very proud Mexican, you know. He, he bore a, a lot of respect, you know, to for this country, you know, so he he taught us the basics of citizenship, you know, and uh, respect for for the uh, law. So um, 
he was very, in spite of everything else, he was very thankful that, you know, I mean, he was very um, grateful to this country for, for us being here. My parents spoke Spanish at home, and uh, that's what we learned. In fact, that was the first language, a written language that I, I learned, because my dad was a, a, a school teacher. He had a, he had a, he had a class where he taught Spanish to all the kids, not not affiliated with a local school board or nothing like that. It was just a mission he put on himself that he was going to teach the, the kids Spanish because um, he he didn't like the way he that the, the kids were 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 speaking Spanish here and. And so he wanted to teach them the correct Spanish. Uh, then they started sending me to Catholic school. We, was, we were fortunate enough to be able to afford that. And there, you know, uh, it's, we did have some, uh, uh, an early in the day, you know, we, we did have somebody who would translate for us. And in fact, it was a bilingual lady uh, that, that uh, taught us. I remember when I used to make my mother think, you know, that I was really good at speaking English, and they were nothing but gibberish, you know. I was just pronouncing different sounds, you know. And uh, and my mother says, yeah, he can really speak. <laughs> Sweet woman, you know, she's, she was, you know, I. Uh, uh, I don't know if I ever had got the chance to, to tell her, you know, I, I was wrong. But I was just a kid, you know. And, but I can remember, you know, I was trying to make people think I could really speak English. We got married in 19, 1956, April 15, 1956. We decided, my, my wife and I decided that... Uh, we were not going going to speak Spanish to the kids, you know, so they would learn English, you know. And uh, we decided she and I were going to speak, continue speaking Spanish as we were used to. Uh, so uh, we figured that would make it easier for them whenever they joined, whenever they started going to school. And uh, I think it helped them. I think it, it really helped them. Uh, we figured that, you know, eventually they would pick up the Spanish language from us, you know, just listening to us. And uh, actually that's what happened. They all f feel that they belong in, you know, wherever they are. And I think that's the most important thing of all. No matter what they classify you, Spanish, uh, Mexican, South American, or Indian, or whatever, as, as long as they, you, they get the respect, and they get the respect, and they, they, they feel like they belong there. And that's, like I say, that's, that's a, important thing, I think.